Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you from the Nick Ramparo studio on the expansive first floor of the Winners and Winers Sports and Entertainment Complex to bring you today's Deep Three. As always, if you would be so kind, if you're digging what we're doing, if you like what we're putting down, smell what we're cooking, you know what I'm saying. Give us the old thumbs up on this video and uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We do put up brand new content each and every day. And uh, click the bell, you get notified every time that content goes up. And of course, let us know what you're playing, man. What are you, uh, what are you on today? Tailing the deep three? Fading the deep three? Um, whatever it is, maybe you got something cooked up on your own, man. There's a lot of sports going on. Got a big uh, NBA card, a few games in college basketball, soccer as always from across the pond. Whatever you're on, put it in the comment section. Uh, up to five is what we count. If you want to throw out more than that to help out the other betters, Please feel free. We appreciate it. Uh, we will just uh, uh, count the first five. If, if you get them right, we'll give you the shout out. You get enough of them right, just like Nick Rampero. You will be our capper of the day. So, with that being said, let's uh, remind everybody to stop by winnersandwiners.com and statsalt.com, our two sites. Uh, Winners and Winers doing deep dives into every contest going on in America every single day, including ultra deep dives into most of the NFL cards, including the Monday and Thursday night games. So if you are the kind of person that thrives on information, you want to see the matchup stats, the trends, all that stuff, you can do no better than winnersandwiners.com, which is the reason they are the number one predictive site for sports analysis in the world. So with that being said, let's move on to the recap of today's action. Um, we did go 2-1 and one on the uh, deep three as we had Dallas. And we had the uh, Chicago Los Angeles Rams under. We also had the Jacksonville Indianapolis under. And uh, Indianapolis looked uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty darn good there with uh, with getting their uh, with getting rid of the uh, <laughs> of the quarterback that they had. Uh, Jacoby Brissett made his return, and uh, they uh, they looked pretty good. They did lose Marlon Mack. Uh, who knows for how long? He's had a broken hand. I've already taken him. I've already had to put him on the bench for my fantasy team. So uh, if you do have Marlon Mack, the word to the wise is he's at least going to miss this Thursday night game. Of course, you know, it's the NFL, and these guys are tougher than nails, so he'll probably just miss one game where you and I, you know, uh, we've got a broken hand. Yeah, I'm taking about a month off of work for that. So <laughs> anyway, um, so we did go 2-1 and one there, and we go 1-1 one and one on the uh, on the premium side as we had the... Uh, uh, what we had there? Oh, we had the uh, Chicago. Oh, we had the uh, 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 we had the over on the uh, uh, Tampa Bay and New Orleans game, and then we had the Oakland Raiders to cover ten and a half, and uh, kind of a heartbreaking defeat there as they kind of screwed around with Cincinnati the whole day, and they ended up uh, having a four point lead with the ball uh, first and goal from inside the one yard line, and because they're the Raiders, they could not score a touchdown to put us at eleven. End up kicking the field goal and Bob's your uncle. There goes that. So one and one on the day on the premium side. Two and one on the deep three. Three and two we go on the day. Uh, much better than our college day yesterday. Rough, rough, rough college day. So uh, we're glad to be back in black, as they say on the NFL ledger. All right. So let's take a look, see what we've got cooked up for today, shall we? We're going to start, uh, we're going to build the suspense here a little bit. We're going to start in the NCAA basketball world as the Stetson Hatters, yes, what else would they be called? The Stetson Hatters travel to Columbus to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Buckeyes are a 30-point favorite. Don't be scared of that number. Uh, Ohio State's new pieces have really come together nicely so far this season. Uh, a little bit earlier than I think, earlier than most people anticipated. They got out of the gates with a 12-point win over Cincinnati. And uh, in their last game, they had a 25-point curb stomping of then number 10, Villanova. Uh, the Hatters of Stetson, uh, they're coming off a 24-point loss to uh, Purdue, Indiana Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Uh, something tells me that the Buckeyes, I think they're at least six points better than the Mastodons. Fun fact, uh, the Hatters have guys from five different countries on their roster. Wow. Here's another fun fact. Uh, not one of them can stop Caleb Wesson. Ohio State, minus the 30 points, all right? And we are going to take a look at the Kansas City Chiefs as they travel to Mexico City at uh, Estadio Azteca. Apparently, they've got the field fixed. This is the game they had to 
this is the game they had to cancel. Well, they moved it last year uh, up to Los Angeles in the middle of all the wildfires there. So, uh, yeah, they've had a year to fix the, the field, and apparently they had that done. Uh, maybe uh, I think Shakira uh, did not have a concert there a week before the game. So that should, that should work out well for us. Uh, Chiefs are uh, are giving away four, excuse me, five points in this one. And the bet I'm taking a look at, I like the Chiefs in the first half minus the three points. Uh, Kansas City in this series has a history of coming out strong against the Chargers. They have covered the first half line in six straight games. And uh, these teams know each other very, very intimately. More importantly, uh, Big Red, Andy Reid, uh, he knows how to deal with the Chargers' defense. Uh, Mahomes and the Chiefs, uh, that offense is as close to unstoppable as it can possibly be. Chiefs get back... Uh, two key pieces on that offensive line. They get uh, guard uh, Laurent Darene Tardif, uh, the doctor from Canada. They get him back. And I think he was back last week. He was not completely healthy. He should be much better shape this week. And they get left tackle back Eric Fisher. And that is huge as his replacement Cameron Irving has just been the uh, pretty much the entire time. So it'll be nice to have Fisher back in the fold and just in time to be able to deal with Bosa and Ingram. So, yeah, very, very nice. Uh, Pat Mahomes is also healthy for the first time in a, you know, probably a month, month and a half, as his uh, ankle has had, finally had a chance to heal. Doesn't seem to be having any issues from his dislocated kneecap. Um, because, you know, why? Apparently he's a superhuman athlete and uh, doesn't get bothered by mere mortal things like having the kneecap spun around 90 degrees from where it should be. Um, the... Uh, uh, the Chargers, you know what they're going to want to do. They're going to run a run the ball with Melvin Gordon and uh, and kill that clock. But here's the thing. Phillip Rivers is absolutely struggling. He is uh, having a hard time. He has thrown uh, seven TD pa passes and eight picks in his last six games. I don't know that he's going to be able to help out uh, as far as sustaining drives if the Chargers are, have a, are having to play behind the sticks at all. Um, the good news is for the Chargers... They usually make pretty fair halftime adjustments with Anthony Lynn, uh, but the Chiefs—they've outscored him the last four and last four games in the first half by 23. They've outscored him in the last four in the second half by just 16. I think the Chiefs roll early in this one. Give me Kansas City first half minus the three points. And our prop of the day—I love this one. I, I, of course, I love I love all my props equally. It's hard to pick a favorite, but this one's going to be my favorite for today. I've got Phillip Rivers under 276 yards passing. Uh, I think the Chargers are going to want to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and then run the ball some more. Uh, Rivers, like we talked about earlier, has been wildly inaccurate the last couple of weeks, and they are going to do their best to try to keep him out of those uh, behind-the-chain situation, those third and long, second and long. Uh, the Chargers, they know they're not going to win a shootout with Pat Mahomes in that offense. There are too many weapons on the Kansas City side. And I don't think Anthony Lynn even wants to try. Give me Phillip Rivers way under 276 yards passing. I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood. Eh, 230, 235, something like that. So uh, let's get down on a Rivers underperforming that 276. The Ohio State Buckeyes a minus 30, you know, because we had such good luck with them covering the big spread this weekend in football. Although, you know, in fairness, first time they haven't covered the spread. So we're going we're gonna to get back to the boys and give Ohio State another chance to cover a monster spread, minus the 30. And first half bet, we're taking Kansas City Chiefs, minus the three points versus the San Diego Chargers. At the end of those three games, hey man, we'll fire up the week in winning fashion. How about 3-0? and I smell what the rock is cooking. 3-0, and baby. You guys can join me. We'll pick up our winning tickets. We will head back to the window. All right, kids. Uh, we do have our premium picks available. We'll have the link in the description of the video if you want to get down on our premium service. We would love to have you. We're still making a little bit of money on football, and we've got some uh, great new pricing. So if you're interested, follow the link. We'll be happy to get you hooked up, all right? And as far as the shout-outs go, let's start off with Sebastian Arnold. Hey, name starts with A. Why, who else would we start with? Uh, yesterday, he put up uh, eight picks. He had five pushes, five pushes, two wins, one loss. Uh, and then he said, profit is profit, though. I'll take it. Yeah, dude, you go five, you go five two, and one every day. You take that all the way to quitting your day job and telling your boss to go fuck himself because you're about to make a lot of money betting sports. Five, two, and one. That, my friend, is just fine. Uh, um, he Today, he had a uh, uh, rough day. Rough day. Might want to tell his boss to fuck off quite yet. Um, he had uh, 
Uh, a tough day in the NFL. He did have England on the over there in uh, in uh, across the pond in what we call uh, football, and uh, England minus two at plus two hundred. He did hit that one, uh, but uh, it's kind of a kind of a dry run on the football side. So uh, hopefully uh, he will be back on the right side of the ledger here today with this Monday night game. And he said, "Oh, sure, good luck today, to everybody. Thanks me for my content. Of course, always my pleasure. Love doing it. Love interacting with you guys. And uh, hope nothing but the best for each and every one of you." Uh, Stephen Tejada put down a five-game teaser. He had the uh, Cowboys, the Vikings, the Saints, and the Texans. Oh, oh, you know, and I didn't hate that Texans play at all. Um, I, 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 laid, I laid off of it. I, I couldn't, I couldn't pull the trigger on it. But if I had a lean, probably would have been on the Texans. Um, Lamar Jackson uh, was absolutely studly as far as the run game goes. Uh, the legendary King. I uh, had a rough week, and then he came back and commented and said, wow, what a horrible week for me. The Texans suck. Uh, they certainly did today, my friend. Uh, they did their impression of the Miami Dolphins there in game one against the uh, against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Steve Godon. Uh, Steve Godon today, he had a little American football, he had a little Canadian football, and he got, uh, he got juiced on the day. Uh, the confused Oracle, uh, confused Oracle, not too confused today, had a six- Team teaser, as he had a VCU Arkansas State uh, in the uh, in the NCAA basketball world. And he had the Arizona Cardinals plus sixteen and a half. He said they might win outright. Yeah, they might. They they certainly gave it a ride there, brother. Uh, he had the Arizona Wildcats. He had the Raiders minus five and a half. He had the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, he did just fine as those six went six and zero. Oh. And he said, "I'm going to bet my whole paycheck on the Arizona Cardinals." Plus ten and a half. Oh, 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 oh. oh man. Uh, <laughs> never a doubt, my friend. That was about the royal. That was almost the royal. Uh, um, yeah, not good. Uh, I didn't know. Honestly, I thought they had to kick the extra point at the end of regulation. I thought they didn't have to kick it. Obviously, at the end of, of overtime. But I thought they still kicked it at the end of rev, uh, at the end of regulation. Apparently, there was a rule change a couple of years ago where they don't do it anymore. So uh, on what would have been a miracle, horrid beat with 10 and a half turned into a half point victory. When you hot, you hot, Oracle. Nicely done. Um, he said Vegas is way too generous here. He said, what an oxymoron. Yeah, no shit. And uh, he also said that the public and uh, they are taking the Ravens Texans over. So I think the defense is going to show up and the under will hit. Uh, well, the defense showed up on one side of the ball, but it did not show up on the other. But, it still stayed under because uh, the Texans did such a terrible job. So he did a uh, he had a nice day. Went three and one on his straight picks. He goes one and zero oh on his six team teaser. Uh, six team teaser, by the way, six team six point teaser pays plus six ten. Uh, that's a fine day right there. That is plus eight twenty on the day. Nicely done, Oracle. Uh, Jimmy Jack said half points are awesome. Who wants a push? That's certainly the argument on the other side of it. I'm guessing that. Uh, I'm guessing the confused Oracle, big fan of that half point about now in that uh, in that San Francisco game, and uh, I like Jimmy Jack. He uh, he played a uh, he played an alternate spread parlay today, and uh, he didn't hit it, but uh, it was uh, it paid twenty five bucks to pay thirty three hundred. So if you get if you got on the right side of one of those, and yeah, if somebody asked him about it, he goes because they're almost impossible to hit. Yeah, they are. That's why they pay. Uh, you know, fuck whatever that would be. That would be uh, 1,200 to 120 to 1 there, roughly in that neighborhood. So, yeah, that's that's why it pays 120 to 1 because they're hard to hit. But, uh, man, you got to, uh, so if you're going to swing for the, if you're going to swing, might as well swing for the fences. I totally get that. Uh, Kent P said yesterday was a fine day. Said hopefully we can keep it rolling. He forgot to mention that Colorado passed the sports betting proposition. Uh, yeah. And this is kind of funny. They call it a proposition. It's the proposition betting. No kidding. I uh, said, "Won't have to wait till have to wait till next year, but uh, it'll be nice to have it local." Yep, no kidding. And uh, I mean, the kid, he had a couple of plays. He had the over in the Houston Ravens game. He had Oakland, he had Oakland minus eleven and a half, and so uh, he does have the Chargers and the Chiefs over one fifty one uh, fifty one and a half tonight. So we'll see how that goes. The astute Hardvark, the astute Hardvark said he went, ended up seven and three yesterday, but he posted the wrong five. <laughs> said sorry about that today. I uh, said uh, bad numbers compared to what I'd sniffed earlier in the week, uh, but one must work with what's available at the time. Absolutely true. Yeah, that's uh, that's always a challenge to find great numbers early in the week to handicap. Uh, he hit the uh, he had a couple today. He had 
Uh, Cowboys minus seven. He also had Seton Hall. Uh, Hammer and Hank. Uh, Hammer and Hank had a couple winners. He had the Bears uh, and the uh, Rams under 40. And he also had the New York Jets plus two. Well done there, Double H. Uh, Daniel Ruon. Daniel Ruon had uh, hit the Patriots and the Sixers. Uh, lost out on the Celtics. He goes two and one plus 90. Nick Rampero said San Diego State shit the bed. Yeah, they did. They were dreadful. Just awful in that game. Um, I would, uh, that was, I didn't, uh, I, I, I mean, I, 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 they were good enough. That was the thing. They were, uh, Fresno State, I really thought that Fresno State would, uh, would have a little something for them, but, uh, San Diego State, they did their thing there, and, uh, he was gonna play, he was gonna play Virginia Tech, talked himself out of it. Yeah, we've been there. Um, I did like, I, I, I liked Vautech in that one. Um, it was very nicely done for, uh, for the Hokies. They were actually coming on. They looked sh like, they were horrible in the beginning of the season. And now they're actually looking like a real play, a real team there in the ACC. Um, and uh, Nick had a couple winners. He had San Francisco minus nine and a half, and he hit Buffalo minus the seven. Yeah, I'm going to chuckle every time somebody has a San Francisco winner. Um, he had Buffalo minus seven, and he had a uh, three-team parlay on the uh, Buffalo Miami under. That one turned into a score fest. Who would have seen that coming? Uh, that was tough. So. Uh, Couple winners there for Nick. The Golden One, the Golden One had the Cowboys minus seven and a half. Also had the Saints and Bucks over fifty-one. That ended up being a push as uh, that total ended up on fifty-one. Uh, Ronald Durante, um, he had uh, he, he he was he was he was right on one of them, he was, and he was really good on one. He was not good on another one. He had the uh, he, he, well, he liked, he liked Dallas big. He liked Dallas an alternate, uh, alternate run line, uh, or money line, or, uh, spread line. Minus 13 and a half and the Pan Panthers. I like the Pan, you know, like I said, I, I thought the Panthers had a shot in that one. Uh, rough day. The Cowboys should have won it by more than that. They had that one put away. Uh, stack left. Said one and five yesterday. Ouch. Yeah, no shit, dude. That's a, uh, like I said, the first, first losing day we've had on the college side on the, on the Saturday plays. So yeah, it was a, that was a stinger for sure. Uh, he liked Arizona today as uh, New Mexico State had some injuries to its best players, and that absolutely came through. Arizona crushed uh, the Aggies there. He goes, uh, so he goes 1 0 plus 100. Nice solid day stack left. Uh, Rocco Alvarez said, uh, said 52 is too much, my friend, in that Oregon game. Fuck, now you tell me. Jesus, where, where were you? <laughs> yeah, 52 is definitely too much in the Oregon game when only one team wants to score. So, uh, you know, I really thought Arizona would have a little more form, but the uh, Oregon defense decided to. Uh, uh, make that comeback appearance. It looked like they did it early in the season. Uh, so he won some money on Oregon. And he said he's waiting for the Cowboys. And uh, so, yeah, the Cowboys ended up in. So he had a straight three-team parlay uh, from yesterday and today. Nice job, Rocco. Well done, my friend. Uh, Darwin Tango. Uh, Darwin had, uh, he, he missed out on VMI, but he did have Fairfield. As VMI ended up winning that game big, but they were they were tied. or They were uh, down three at halftime, down two. Yeah, um, it was close. Uh, and then he had Fairfield plus three and a half in the first half. That paid off. And he had the Patriots minus three in the first half. That did not pay off. So he goes, uh, uh, then he had a parlay. So, uh, he ends up getting, uh, juiced or excuse me. No, I'm sorry. He uh, didn't get that second win there. Sorry, Darwin. Um, uh, King Ham, King Ham goes three and two on the day plus 80. He had the Cowboys, Patriots and the Ravens, uh, Kyle Z. So I'm so sad. I went six and oh on my picks. I posted and, uh, including a, a two ninety five parlay. He had a 10-0 day on everything, and uh, since so the second time he's hit 10-0, and, and that's absolutely true, uh, he put all 10 picks in last time, and uh, yeah, we saw that happen. Funny story, uh, my boss, the owner, the owner of the company, Winners Winers, he also went 10-0 on Saturday. Him and I kind of have a little informal battle going on, and I had had a one-game lead uh, for the season going in, and uh, he kind of put it on me yesterday, going 10 and zippy, so very nice. Uh, Kyle Z said, I'm no capper of the day I could cry. Yeah, you can cry all the way to the bank as you're cashing 10 fucking tickets. You are breaking all of our hearts, Kyle. Breaking our hearts here. Uh, so today, uh, he kind of kept it going a little bit. He goes out and uh, and hits a teaser. And he goes 3-1 and one on a straight picks for plus 290. He had a two point, uh, two, two team teaser with Dallas and Buffalo. And uh, he said, now for the rest. And this was a uh, this was a situation. And this is what happens when you cap games. One of them, you sound like a genius. You're like, oh my God, the guy's like Kreskin. And the other one, you sound like you just literally uh, landed in this country and you have no idea what the game of football is about. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened with Kyle, but that's how I feel sometimes. Uh, Kyle said, uh, uh, in the small reds, he had Denver plus 10, said sprinkle the money line. They are live dogs here at plus 408. Yeah, they were. They're live as shit. They were up 20 
at halftime. That's pretty live. Brilliant, brilliant call there. It didn't work out on the money line, but it should have, as they had three chances to win it at the end, even. Um, and then he said the same thing for betting Houston, plus four and a half, sprinkle that money line. Uh, whoops. So, uh, yeah, nice day yesterday, Kyle. Very well done. Nice day today as well. Landon Hayes, uh, he had the uh, Vikings, Cowboys, and money line parlay uh, at minus 129. And uh, then he had 10 point teaser. And the one that screwed him there really was the Falcons and uh, Jal Jacksonville did too as well. Uh, C Dub, C Dub is uh, he's the I don't even know why he wastes time doing soccer. <laughs> C Dub is the props master. He had the Vikings team total over uh, twenty six. Uh, not really uh, a couple of props, a couple of straight bets. Uh, he had the Saints Bucks over fifty. Uh, he had Jameis Winston over two eighty and a half. Christian McCaffrey over 133 and a half combined rushing and receiving yards. Only missed out on Dalvin Cook uh, going over 127 and a half. C-Dub goes 4-1 and one on his props, plus 310. Uh, Derek Saunders, uh, he hit everything inside except the Bears, plus 6 and a half. Said, I'm a sucker for punishment. Indeed you are, the Bears. Uh, although, I, I, I had a little parlay uh, working with the under in the Bears, plus 6 there. And uh, didn't care for it. Didn't care for that end at all. Um, four and one plus three ten on the day for Derek Saunders. Not bad at all. Philip Welch. Hey, Philip, have a day, brother. Um, he put up, uh, he put up six picks, but as you know, we only count the first five and those were the winners. The Ravens, Cowboys, Patriots, Jets, Vikings, Rams, and Saints. Oh, there's six. Yeah, there's the six. Um, yeah, six and oh, and then they had the Panthers also. So he goes six and one for, for real. But for our five picks, he goes five and oh plus 500. Philip Welch, well done. Uh, Texas T talk show. Uh, he goes three and one as he missed out only on the Bears three and one plus one ninety. Uh, so our positive cappers for the day are positive cappers, if you will. King Ham three and two plus eighty. Daniel Ruon, two and one plus ninety. Stack left one and zero oh, plus one hundred. The Texas T Talk Show three and one plus one ninety. C Dub four and one plus two ninety. Derek Saunders four and one plus two ninety. Kyle Z three and one straight one and zero oh, on the T's. 290 to the good right there. Philip Welch, 5 and 0 plus 500. But normally, you think 5 and 0 plus 500 would be a pretty good day. Think that would be good enough to get you home. But not today when you have the confused Oracle taking no prisoners at all. He goes 3 and 1 in the straight picks, 1 and 0 on that 16 teaser. How about plus 820? Confused Oracle, be confused no more, my friend. You are our capper of the day. Congratulations. You want to put a play up there for Tuesday? Whatever you got working, uh, be happy to uh, get it out to the masses if you throw it in the comment section tomorrow. All right. So our comment section are for this video today, later today, tomorrow, whatever. All right. For the rest of you guys, nice job on you winners. Let's uh, let's go out and make a little of that Monday night, make a little bit of that Monday night money, and whatever happens, you know the drill. We'll be back here tomorrow. We'll bitch about our bad beats, brag about those fat stacks, and then it'll be Tuesday. It'll be a little, uh, a little college action to fire it up and get us excited. So you guys join me as we just jump in there and do it all over again. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Good luck on all your plays, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.